Hi friends, I'm so sorry. My my alarm went off and I don't know if y'all can hear that. I you know I I I when I when I edit everything or just rewatch it to be sure it's okay. Um it literally um I don't hear that. So it's always kind of weird when that happens, but anyways. All right. Um I think cuz I'm always concentrating on the conversation. So what I'm going to do is I can put a little bit of glue here or tape runner and I think I will. You don't have to, but I know how gruff I am with all this stuff. I know that I'm not <laughs> super gentle with everything. And I'm not going to put a lot. I'm just going to, well, I'm not going to use that. Let me just use some glue. All right. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. And then I'm going to let the sticky on my sticky back paper kind of do the job. Well, there you go. Here you go. I can put it there with my trash. Okay. Um, but as we get ready to go into this time of, you know, Christmas, and it's going to be the most different Christmas Christ birth celebration. What is your attitude? Are you going to be, I am so mad that this, this is happening and I cannot be with my family or, you know, so-and-so won't be with us because, you know, they're just a nervous Nelly or, you know, whatever it is that you feel like, or I'm so frustrated because everybody's pressuring me and I don't feel like I can do this. That's more me. Um, but um, what are you doing about this? What is the attitude of your heart? Are you going to go into this singing God's praise and give thanksgiving for even the difficult things in your life? Or are you going to let this wear you down so that you aren't going to be a good witness for him? That's something that, you know, it's really interesting. The family members who's had a hard time through it, this sent me something, um, here recently about basically blooming where you're planted, you know, recognizing, you know, they could have been far worse and how blessed we are to have gone through this during this time period. And I mean, I've had lots of people send this to me lately and you know what, what it could have played out like and what it could have been like. And I was just like, so thankful. I was like, Lord, that is exactly what I've been praying that you know, this person would find joy in the journey, that they would find a place where they could bloom where they're planted and trust that God is God and he's in control. So as you go through this time and you prepare for Christmas, might I encourage you in this way? Build your gratitude. Think about what it is that God needs you to do to serve him well. Where is it that he needs you to till the land, to prepare the seed, to plant the seeds? to water the seeds, to tend to the seeds, to, to harvest the, the produce from the seeds and then prepare again the soil where God has called you to serve him or the cattle that you care for. I mean, it's the same story. They're calves, they grow, you know, there's a cycle to it. And then we have the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. We always watch the calves next door. And I was telling my husband, we got a lot of calves for this time of year, you know. <laughs> and he said, well, we've had a late, you know, kind of a warm summer or warm fall. And I said, yeah, I said, exactly. That's exactly right. And uh, anyways, because he was asking me, you know, well, isn't it time for X, Y, and Z? And I said, probably not yet, you know. <laughs> so, but anyway, so long story short, I challenge you, my dear, sweet friends. To think this day, where is it that God has called you to serve him? And as you leave this camp and you're focusing on, you know, the things that come and they're going to be things that are going to come at us because that's what Satan loves to do, doesn't he? He just sure loves to trip us up, doesn't he? So what are you going to do? Are you going to go in the garden and you're going to talk to God and you're going to talk about it out loud, wherever your garden is, your war room, whatever it is that you go to, where you go to, to pray. You know, for me, when I was young, I'd go to the ocean and I'd go out where nobody would be. And I would just talk to God. And that was just like, Oh, I can still think of that and how wonderful a place that was. Where is your place that you go and you get alone with God and you seek his will in your life and you ask him, where am I to serve and how am I to serve? 
what is it that you can do as you move forward from this camp and you take what you've learned, you've learned that the names of God, we've learned um, all about who God is and, and, and what he does for us and how we praise him for that. And then how he wants us to take that knowledge of who he is and, and, and how we praise him and share that and give it away and, and, and begin to plant seeds and, and, and grow and, and, uh, um, as the scripture says here, he says he blesses them and they multiply greatly. How is God multiplying your faith right now? Is it going and sharing with others or is it within your heart? And, and I'm not saying within your heart isn't a good answer because it should. We should grow our faith in our heart. But we don't grow it to be selfish and hold on to God. We grow it to share and encourage others to be with us. Uh-oh, my husband's coming with the tool again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. God love him. Anyways, um, he got a new tool today. So we're, we're, he's playing with all of his tools. <laughs> That's why we had to go up in the city. All right, friends, let's pray. I'm gonna let you go. We've got a zoom in about 13 minutes. So I got to get the, the stuff off my hands. So, all right, friends, I am so thankful that each and every one of you are here. I just want you to know how much God loves you and what a plan he has for your life. And there is someone very special in your life that he wants you to share with about your testimony of, of who he is in your life and what he has done. Because you may be the only person that that person may meet so that they can know him as Savior. I know. Sometimes that's hard to hear. But you are so special in God's kingdom. And he really loves you. And he wants everybody he created to know him and be in fellowship with him. And are we being obedient in doing that? Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that's been provided in this camp and all the different types of resources that you had me pull things. I, you know, I went through Lord and we wrote one type of camp and then somehow it deleted on my, on my computer. And I imagine um, next week after this camp is closed, you're going to show me where that whole curriculum is. <laughs> and I'm just going to praise your name. It almost makes me cry. I know how perfect your will is, God. Oh, God, the things you do in our lives. We, we Sometimes we never know why, but we trust you and we must obey you. And not only as we know you as Savior in our lives, but as we continue in this world, Lord, no matter where we are, whether we're at home, sheltered in since March. <laughs> Thank you. I I don't even know. Parts of me wants to cry because it's so sad. And parts of me wants to know that you are God and you are taking good care of each of us and taking care of me and my little broken down body. <laughs> well, I wish it were little, but you know what I mean, God. <laughs> so, but I just thank you, God. And we praise you in the good and the bad. We praise you during this pandemic. And we thank you, God, for all the provisions that you've given us and all the people who are serving and able to get out and go out and do these things. And God, we ask you right now to protect them. Today, as we drove by and we saw the long line of cars waiting for COVID tests, I couldn't help for praying out loud. And I know that, you know, my husband doesn't necessarily like to talk about COVID. And I tend to go there because I think about the homeless camp that we saw and then the people in line to get tested and the nurse standing out there taking the information. And I prayed for her safety. And Lord, I know that you know all that is going on and we trust you. And when you say go, we need to go and God give us the gumption and the prodding and the pricking and, and let us know when you need us to do something for you and where we need to serve you and how we need to obey you and to be faithful to plant those seeds and water them and pray for them. And if we don't even get to be there for the harvest, help us to continue to pray for them and, and praise you for the harvest. No matter what, even though we may not get to enjoy the harvest, how much of a blessing is it to be a part of your work in all things, God? Lord, as we finish out this day, we give this evening to you and we trust you as we move forward through this Thanksgiving season and this time where people are mostly used to gathering and how much I thank you for our children who have been so understanding and respectful 
Um, I know that there was a challenge with one of our kiddos and it just worked out beautifully today. And that not only in our family, we're going to have another family that we've always celebrated with. And God, we're doing it all the way you've designed it right now. And as somebody who is not technologically savvy, I thank you for the journey of learning how to compress files and, and, and send large emails and just things that I used to know. I used to teach it, but I haven't used it in golly. Wow. I don't know. I'm, it's been 11 years and I, and it's all changed, no doubt, but thank you, God. And so as each of us go through this season, let us see where it is you need us to be. Help us to learn what it is you need us to learn. And then help us to go to the garden and pray or to our war room and pray. And help us to pray for those that we get to plant seeds with. Those we get to just see their eyes. And not even get to go back and give them the tract or the the meal card. Thank you. Okay, Lord, you know my heart. You know each person here and how burdened we are for those that don't know you as Savior. Call us to your will and where we need to be. And even if it is just to put our hands up and show that we're praying for them because we don't have anything to give them. And the joy in their face and the thankfulness that was expressed with that one gentleman in Houston, God, help us to be faithful to pray. Help us to be faithful to hurry and go get what we need so the next time we're ready to share your word. And Lord, thank you for that opportunity and for the more that you have for us as we move forward. Thank you. And Lord, I pray for this young man who came on our property today to give us a bit on the roof. And I pray as my husband spoke and talked to him about things in the world. I pray that somehow my husband was bold and shared the good news of you. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. We bow down before you and we love you, Jesus. And we thank you for all that you've done for each one of us. And God, we give this time to you always now and in the future as people come and watch us, God. We trust that your words will be heard and not mine. Thank you, God. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Sorry, guys. I love ministry. I loved serving as a missionary. You can see why. (laughs) It was such a great part of my life and how honored I was to serve in my little bitty tiny way. (laughs) But, um, but we're all called, we're all called in wherever we go to be that light for Christ. And that is the blessing that God has for us as his children to serve him well. So, okay, friends, I got to go now, put a little powder on my face and put a little lipstick on before our zoom, but I will get this uploaded after that. And just know guys, we have one more day left. Come ready, come ready, come ready. And please remember that if we like and comment, then more people may have an opportunity to hear the good news and hear this video or share this video with somebody who may be on the cusp or struggling or wondering what do we do in difficult times. I may not have taught this perfectly, but God will prick somebody's heart. They won't hear me or see me. They'll hear him and they'll hear his word. And that's all that matters. Okay, friends. All right, guys, I love you. And I can't wait to see your beautiful faces. I hope we have a lot of people. I know it's a busy time. And if you can't come and you didn't come because you're going to see this after, that is okay. Do not even worry. It, like I said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I will be also. And uh, I've already had one person, you know, send the message. They'll be there. And I'm thrilled. I'm totally thrilled with that. Okay, friends, keep serving Jesus well. He needs you. He created you for fellowship with him, to know him, to read his word, and to pray and talk with him and praise him and thank him, and then share that with somebody else. All right, my friends, I love you. Y'all stay safe. I'll talk to you very soon, some of you. And if not, you'll see this video when it comes up. And tomorrow's going to be an amazing, amazing class. Okay, guys, I'll be talking to you soon. Love y'all. Bye-bye.